four of Frederick Bachman's novels have been adapted for viewing either as movies or as TV shows, and I have watched them all and am ready to discuss. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly, and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. Also, if you haven't noticed, Scout's going to be joining us today. She gets dinner in about 30 minutes, so she just wants to sit here to make sure that I don't forget about that. So all four of the adaptations are in Swedish. Two of these are movies. That is A Man Called Uva and Britt Marie Was Here. And then the other two are, I guess, limited series, as in they're just like one season and then they're done, which is Bear Town with five episodes and Anxious People with six. I should also mention that the first English adaptation of a Frederick Bachman novel is on its way. I'm pretty sure the talks of this started like four or five years ago at this point because I've definitely been talking about it for a long time. Like I remember at the start of my in-person book club, which was five years ago, talking about this movie and being really excited about it. Basically, it's a man called Uva, but Tom Hanks is playing Uva. But it seems like it's actually happening now because it is in post-production. And supposedly, according to IMDb, it is going to be coming out in December of this year, 2022. So I think I can officially say it's happening, but also I'll just like knock on wood to be safe. It's okay, there's nobody at the door. And it will actually be called A Man Called Auto instead of Uva. So I'm very excited for that one. And I'd love to talk about it when it happens. Let me know if you would like an update video to this one when that comes out. Anyways, I do want to say that I am not planning on including any spoilers in this video. However, for the Bear Town portion of it, I am going to be talking about the main event that's in that book. And while it is foreshadowed very heavily in the beginning of the book, so much so that you could very likely guess what's going to happen before it happens, this the event itself doesn't actually happen until like halfway through the book, which I think technically does make it a spoiler. And I'm going to be vaguely alluding to that in the portion of this video that's about Bear Town. And I think from the way that I'm talking about it, you're gonna know what it is that I'm talking about. So if you have not read or seen Bear Town and you would prefer to skip that, then just skip that Bear Town section. I'm still gonna rank them at the end so you'll know how I feel about the Bear Town show versus the other adaptations that there's been of Frederick Bachman stuff. Okay, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's go ahead through each of these stories. I'm going to go in chronological order from when these were released. So starting in 2016 with A Man Called Uva. Chronologically is in when the media was released, not the book. Although I think that that it's still going to be the same order no matter what. So I guess both. But the movie A Man Called Uva came out in 2016. I would say that the movie really captured the feelings that the book gives you. Like from the cringe that you feel when Uva is trying to convince the store clerk when buying flowers that the discount really works in the way that he sees it instead of the way that it's clearly intended to work or like the many moments that you just have to cry or the moments that are really funny and sometimes you're just laughing at Uva and sometimes you're laughing with him and it's a great time like it's definitely got all of those I do however wish that they had expanded a little bit more on Anita and Rune's relationship I think that they didn't touch on that quite as much as the books. I understand why not. You don't really have the time for that. And also some more, I guess, secondary characters were not as fleshed out as they were in the books, which once again is understandable. For the most part, I think that the characters were done really well and they still gave enough of the background for us to care about them like we're supposed to. But yeah, overall, very well done and just like a nice, sweet, heartfelt movie. Then in 2019, we get the adaptation, the movie adaptation of Brit Marie Was Here. This one was so lovely and it was also a very quick watch, which was honestly kind of sad. It has a very short runtime of being just an hour and a half long, which means that so much had to be cut. And that was really sad to see because I really love the story of Brit Marie. I will say casting wise, I think they did a fantastic job, especially with Brit Marie, the actress that they got for that. She did such a great job with it. But I think that a lot of the characters besides Britt Marie really suffered from having such a short runtime because we weren't able to dive into it nearly as much. As an example, Vega, who's one of the main characters, I would say that Britt Marie connects with. And Vega's character is really just boiled down to, in the movie, someone who really likes soccer, and towards the end, you get a little bit about her family past. And that's really it. So there's not a lot of development between 
her and Britt Marie, like the relationship, the friendship that they have and how sweet that is. There's really just not a lot of development in general with Britt Marie and like the townspeople and everything that are in this story. And just like the events in general are, it's so shortened in order to fit into this time. And you lose like a lot of what the story had. Like it's still very sweet on its own. And I think that if I were to look at this objectively without thinking about the book, it's still like a great, very sweet and fun movie and very fast paced. But I think it loses a lot of the stakes that the book sets up because the time period feels so very short and things happen so quickly that you're never even like really given the space to care about them or worry about them before you're like at the end and it's resolved. Next we have Bear Town, which once again was a five episode series. I don't know if I'm ready to <laughs> dive into this. This one came out in 2020, by the way. So I guess I'll start with like the feelings of the book and the atmosphere. I think that it did get that across in the series. And in fact, I do think that this is a good series. And if you haven't read Bear Town, but you're interested in the TV show, I think it is still definitely worth it to watch. I just think that if you have read Bear Town and you're going into it, to just think of them as two separate things, honestly, there there is a lot that they changed. But the town, like they really nailed the town. So much so that when I was reading The Winners, the third book in the series, I was just picturing this town specifically that I had seen in the series because it just gave such good visuals and very accurate feeling visuals to what is presented in the book. So I did appreciate that. So I do want to talk about a few of the major changes that really lessened the story. So Peter, Kira, Maya, and Leo, that's the Anderson family, and in the show, it begins with them moving to Bear Town. Maya and Leo have, I believe, never even been to Bear Town before. Kira might have been, but I don't remember. And then Peter, he did still grow up there. So there is still that connection. Like he started playing hockey in Bear Town and then went to the NHL, started a family and everything, and then came back. But because of this change, this takes away so much from so many characters and it's really surprising actually how much it does. First of all, I think one of the biggest things is Kira. She also, her name I think is Mira in the show instead of Kira, which I found interesting. But in the book, she's been working for this company for a long time and she's oftentimes had to turn down better opportunities within the company because she just doesn't have the time to to do that because Peter is so involved in hockey and she needs to make time for the kids. Like she takes a lot of pride in her work. So if it were up to her, she would spend more time working. And then there's a moment where she has to turn down, it's early on in the book, so this is not a spoiler at all, where she has to turn down this big promotion because she just can't feasibly do it in her schedule. And that means so much more because we know she's been working for this company for a long time. And the way they do it in the show, she like just started working at this company and then they're like, hey, we want to promote you. And she turns it down. Like, and it just doesn't seem to have the same impact because we don't know how much she's already given to this company. So that was a big thing. And just the fact that she in the book has already been in this town that she doesn't particularly like for a long time before the book has started. So it's already really grating on her by the time the book even starts and that doesn't really, we don't have that in the show. And then another huge character that's impacted is Anna because Maya and Anna, like their friendship is such a huge part of the book and it just doesn't really exist in the show because they've only just met. That when the show starts, they meet for the first time and that's their friendship. And so much of Anna and her character is being a friend. It's how good of a friend she is and how giving she is to other people and all that's kind of taken away. We can't really see any of that because she's just this new person that Maya knows and talks to a bit. So that's kind of sad because I think that that was just a really great like female friendship that was really nice to see. But I think the biggest and most important thing that is impacted from them just having moved back is that because Maya has only just moved to the town, nobody in the town knows Maya really at all prior to the major like event happening in the story. I think because in the story they know her beforehand, the sting of it feels so much worse. Like it feels like a true betrayal of the town against Maya in the book. Whereas in the show, it feels like they've simply chosen the side of somebody who grew up in the town 
over somebody who just got here. And while that's obviously still wrong, it just doesn't show as much like the lengths that people will go to, or I think it doesn't like display the same message that Bachman was getting across by having two parties that both grew up in Beartown and one of them is chosen over the other. So by eliminating the reason of one of them's from Beartown and one of them isn't, then that can't be factored into it at all, making the betrayal so much worse in the book. So that I feel like really played into it. That doesn't mean that it doesn't still have some of that same messaging. It's just not as powerful, I would say. And in addition to that, I think that how Maya is in the show also kind of takes away from that. In the show, she's very shy. She's very quiet. Whereas in the book, she's outgoing. She's friendly. She cares about what she looks like. She cares about the clothes she's wearing. She jokes about guys with her best friend. Like she's very much, I guess, like an average teenager who is very outgoing. And I think that that is used against her later on. And she's very much blamed for having those qualities that are not, you know, that out of the ordinary, like wanting to look good and things like that. And I think that it's important to show that and show why that's wrong, which is what the book aims to do. Whereas in the show, I think they made Maya so much this quiet, small person that it was more like, see, she did absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, and she does still get blamed for it. But I think that the messaging that was in the book was just stronger and more fully realized, I guess, than, or, and more important, really, than in the show. It's just kind of like the show was giving us the same message, just toned down and without a lot of the nuance. Lastly, there was just some characters that unfortunately really took a backseat or really lost a lot of who they were in the show versus in the book. One of them I would say is Amat's mother. She's barely in the show, it feels like, and she says almost nothing at all. And then also David's character in the show, he's so very one-sided. He just seems like kind of this mean, evil man. Whereas in the book, it's more about, and I would say really with all of the characters, they're more morally gray or they it's very clear that they are pulled in multiple directions when making decisions and doing things but it it's clear that it's about the decisions that they make it's about making those hard decisions and either doing things like the right way or the wrong way because of those not because they are this bad person or this good person but that they can be either and sometimes they make better decisions than other times and david really really shows that in the book like you want to just dislike him but there are aspects of him that are nice and that show him as being a good guy and a good coach whereas in the show he's just he's so hateable in the show it's so easy to be like oh don't like him and the book doesn't let you get away with that so i i a lot more appreciated that from the book and then peter oh peter peter in the book he's a very he's very meek for being a like jock i guess for having played professionally in the nhl for being so big into hockey for being a coach and somebody that everybody kind of pinned all their hopes and dreams on when he was playing hockey in bear town for all that like he's very low-key i guess He's not one to get into fights. He barely gets like really angry or anything. He has a hard time really like standing up and saying what he means, but he's very sweet. He's very endearing and he's very loving and loves his family so, so much. He's much more likely to speak out on behalf of them than he is on behalf of himself. And in the show, I would say he's a, a lot more the jock stereotype. He definitely gets angry and feels a lot of rage in the show that I would say that he doesn't, he feels some of in the book, like after that main event portion, he definitely gets there, but it makes that so much more of a shock and seeing him struggle with that means so much more because you know his character. And then the show, like at one point he even yells at Maya, which I feel like is just so outside of what his character would be in the book, but inside what his character, and he doesn't believe her. Okay. i it was just, it was, that was, I think, probably the most frustrating. It was just how different Peter was. And even though in the other movies that I've already talked about in this video, even though they also have characters that are changed a little bit or lessened, it's not to, I would say, the detriment of the overall message. And it's in ways that I felt like they couldn't really help because a movie can only be so long. But this 
book was turned into a five episode series and each episode is like an hour long. So I think that they did have the time that they could have given these characters and some of the things I feel like it took the same amount of time to portray Peter as he was in the show as it would have if they tried to portray him as he was in the book. I think a lot of the choices that they ended up making, it, it was really just like a detriment and it didn't need to be done that way. Overall though, I do still think like it is a good show. I wouldn't recommend like not watching it or anything. It was still kind of cool to see the story that I really like be brought to life, even if there were parts of it that really annoyed me. Lastly, we have Anxious People, which was a six episode series done in 2021. This stayed pretty faithful to the book. However, there were some things that were done out of order or that were missing a bit plot wise. And I think some characters, again, weren't as fully formed as they were in the book. But again, I think that that's all understandable. The changes that they made, I think all of them are very understandable in this. And I don't think that they take away from the core message of it. I think that they don't quite reach the same level of like heartwarming that the book has, but I also think that that's okay. Sometimes Frederick Bachman can be like a little bit too heartwarming for me. That's weird to say, but it, that's how I feel. So I actually did really like Anxious People because of that. The casting was like perfect. They got great people to play all of these different characters. The way that they do the episodes, the way that they switch the perspectives to different people and show what they saw that night, what they experienced that night, or not night, it was a day. Well, day to night, it uh, doesn't matter. Also, the apartment that they used to film it was perfect. It really worked well for this story, which is great because so much of it takes place in the apartment. Also, one of the characters, Lenart, I'm not sure, if I'm pronouncing that right. I actually preferred the show version of him to the book version of him, which I was very surprised that that I mean, that almost never happens. So that was very cool. So those are the four adaptations that we currently have. If I were to rank them, which I kind of feel like I have to because that's just like a part of these Bachman videos at this point, I would put the Beartown adaptation on the bottom purely because of the things that it changed that annoyed me and changes that I don't think it needed to make, messaging that's very different, all of that. Then above that, I would put Brit Marie was here. I still really enjoyed that movie. It was still really nice to watch, but I do really wish that it was longer. And I think that if it was, it could have gotten a higher spot on this if they were able to explore those characters a little bit better and the growing relationship between them and Brit Marie. Then for the last two, if I was going based off of like faithfulness to the original book, A Man Called Uvo would definitely be on top. However, I think I'd prefer to have this list be purely by like the story itself and the story it presents and the enjoyability of it, whether or not you've read the book. And I think that for that, A Man Called Uva would need to be in second place and Anxious People would be first place to me. So let me know which adaptation that you prefer if you've seen some or all of them. And also if you would like me to do an update to this video when A Man Called auto <laughs> comes out hopefully later this year. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I upload a new video every Wednesday, so consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you then. Bye!